Hello, welcome to the new release spotlight for the week of June 27th, 2003. My name is Lee Colazzo, also known as Mrs. Reader Pants. And as you can see, I have chosen a new place to record. Um, this is a like a nice little park area near my house and uh, there's just a lot of birds. So we'll see how it goes. Um, there's a lot of birds out this morning. So um, I didn't do a spotlight video for the last couple of weeks. So um, this is the first one in a little bit, but it's great spotlight this week. Um, we have uh, great titles for YA, middle grade, and picture books. So let's get started. Okay, starting today with our young adult choices. These are recommended for grades seven through 12. Our first young adult title today is Invisible Sun. This is a mystery thriller novel and it is set in Portland, Oregon in the very, very beginning stages of COVID-19 pandemic. It's set in February of 2020, and we have a young 17-year-old African-American male who is just being released from uh, juvenile detention after being there for two months for a crime that he actually did not commit. So he's already dealing with that stigma coming out of juvie. Um, his neighborhood is being gentrified, so there's a lot of um, wealthier people moving in, particularly white people, so he's got to deal with some prejudice there. Um, his best friend, Sierra, um, who he's secretly in love with, um, her brother has just gone missing. And um, Sierra and her brother are both adopted by a white couple, but they're both black. So her brother's gone missing, and Dre believes that if he can help find the brother, then he will have a chance with Sierra. So that's his plan. He's going to try and find Sierra's missing brother. This is recommended for grades 9 through 12, and it got three starred reviews. Themes include social justice, Black Lives Matter, um, COVID-19, and um, particularly social issues um, involving racism, prejudice, and um, gentrification in this neighborhood. Looks really good. I'm planning to read this one. Okay, our next young adult title is Sing Me to Sleep. This is a YA fantasy and romance that is about a young lady who is a siren. Um, she's kind of tamping down her powers. Um, that's a secret that she has. Um, they, uh, in the book, she is supposed to protect this prince who is, uh, she doesn't like very much, but they get involved in this mystery and trying to find a killer in their area. And it turns out the killer is actually her. So she's investigating a, um, crime spree uh, and a killer that's actually herself and she's she's aware that it's her so um sounds pretty fun i love the concept um this is uh publishers weekly and kirkus starred and is recommended for grades 8 through 12. next up we have monstrous how gorgeous is this cover i'm so excited to read this one this is a ya graphic memoir about a young lady named sarah the author, um, who was born in South Korea but was adopted by a white couple in rural Baltimore, Maryland. Um, she grows up dealing with a lot of bullying and anti-Asian hate and prejudice and things like that in her small community. Um, I really love YA graphic memoirs. This is a new favorite genre of mine, so I definitely plan to read this. This is recommended for grades 8 through 12 and is book list and SLJ starred. Okay, I've had a quick wardrobe change. It is now a new day, but I'm still in my same beautiful new spot to record and there will probably be birds. Um, so our next book is House Party. This is a compilation among, uh, I think, 10 um, young adult authors. They include Angeline Boley and uh, Jasmine Warga and Lamar Giles and um, we've got Randy Ribe who wrote um, The Patron Saints, of, Patron Saints of Nothing which I loved. Um, this is told from multiple perspectives. It kind of reminds me a little of Let It Snow by John Green and um, Et al. Uh, so it's a huge party. It's the end of uh, high school and it's an end of high school celebration party. It's at this huge house 
and it is told from the perspectives of 10 of the um, high school students that are attending the party. So lots of racial diversity here. We have um, LGBT themes as well. Um, and this, I think, would be really good for reluctant readers because it has a, um, it, the text is broken up by text messages and social media posts. And then Jerry Craft, who is the Newbery award-winning author of New Kid, he has black and white illustrations throughout as well. So um, this would be a great one to suggest to students who are um, reluctant readers or who just uh, have to read something for school but don't know what to read. So this is book list starred and recommended for grades 7 through 12. All right, next up we have our middle grade titles. These are for grades 3 through 8, and I have four middle grade titles for you today. All right, our next, our first middle grade title is How to Stay Invisible. This is, um, I'm actually really interested in reading this book because I loved um, How to Steal a Dog. I love books about um, dealing with homeless um, young people. So this is about a young boy who is 12 and his parents have always been neglectful and um, not, not the best, most responsible parents. But uh, when he's 12, he, they actually just abandon him, they leave him and he, is clearly not going to be able to um, support himself. So he ends up homeless and he moves into the woods that are behind his middle school. So he's still attending the middle school and he's living in the woods behind it. So um, this is um, has a lot of wilderness survival elements to it. Um, he learned how to survive in the wilderness by uh, from a library book that he checks out from his school, and it gives him all kinds of practical tips. So you've got um, kids that like books like Hatchet, um, how to um, not how to steal a dog. Uh, what is it? The Touching Spirit Bear, um, books about survival in the wilderness. Um, would really like this. This is Kirkus and Publishers Weekly Starred and is recommended for grades three through eight. Okay, our next middle grade title is The Probability of Everything. This is about a 11 year old um, Nigerian American um, female protagonist and it is in a, um, it's in a world, our Earth, where they are 84% certain that an asteroid is going to destroy the Earth in the next four days. So this is apocalypse, but it's like pre-apocalypse because it hasn't happened yet, but it's, it's imminent. Um, lots of statistics and probability in the story. The young lady um, narrating the story is really into that. And of course, we have the 84% probability that the Earth will be hit by this asteroid. Um, <clears throat> this is about um, saying goodbye and living out your last four days um, in uh, whatever way that you've, you see fit for your last four days. Um, this will be very, very easy to book talk for um, upper elementary and middle school students. Um, just the, the premise of it alone with the asteroid um, hitting the earth is um, something that students are going to be very interested in. On top of that, this has got three starred reviews and is recommended for grades three through seven. Okay, next up we have Wishing Season. Um, I'm gonna be honest and tell you I'm not likely to read this one. Um, this just feels very, very sad and uh, it's just not my kind of reading, but I think it fills an important niche, so um, I've featured it here. It also got two star reviews, so those are an automatic feature anyway in my new release spotlight. So um, this is realistic fiction with a little touch of the supernatural, possibly could even fit in a magical realism type of um, genre. Um, this is set in Deer Isle, Maine, and it's about uh, an 11-year-old girl whose twin brother died last year when they were in fifth grade um, of cancer. It was a short bout with cancer, and he died. Um, so she's clearly, uh, it's been a year, and she's still obviously dealing with um, an intense amount of grief. <laughs> There's a huge bird up there. Um, and uh, her mother is also um, very depressed, and so she's living with that at home as well. Um, this is about um, moving on and grief. One of the things in the story that makes it magical realism or fantasy is that the young lady can actually see and hear her brother in an area called the overlap. That's what they call it. It's like where um, the afterlife meets the um, present world. So she's able to meet him there, but the 
uh, overlap is fading away. It's slowly getting smaller and the young boy is able to stay in the overlap only um, for shorter and shorter amounts of time. So clearly this is um, maybe a metaphor for the girl moving on uh, with her life. So this is Kirkus and Publishers Weekly Starred and is recommended for grades three through seven. Again, don't think it's for everyone, but it could fill a niche really nicely um, if you uh, have students that have lost a sibling or a family member recently. Um, and some kids just really like sad books, but for me, this is a no-go. Okay, now we come to Picture Day. I am so excited about this title. I have read this one and I read it on NetGalley. And um, my review will be coming in the next, hopefully sometime this week. Um, my 10 year old niece is going to review this with me, but she had to wait till the book came out today. So uh, she'll get it on Tuesday, the day the book publishes and um, read it. And then we're gonna work together on the review of it because I really want her opinion on it as well. Um, this will be her first review. So this is a graphic novel and realistic fiction, and as you can see from the cover, the protagonist is a young lady. She's in seventh grade, and she has this glorious purple hair, and she is inspired by a social media um, like influencer that she really loves that um, is always talking about living um, your most authentic life and being your authentic self. So she takes this to heart and she decides on school picture day on the morning of, uh, she is going to chop off all her hair in the bathroom at school and she's going to video it all for social media. So that's what she does. And of course this goes viral and she becomes a huge influence on her peers at school to also become their true authentic selves. So I think this is something, um, the themes in this are really good for seventh grade. Um, you have this sort of, a lot of kids really want to conform, but then they're starting to want to, um, to have their own way of wanting to do things. And should I, should I do that? Should I step out and be myself? And it can be very, very difficult in middle school. So I love that um, for the plot. But what I really love, really, really, really love for this book is the illustrations. This is an illustrator to watch. She is, Sarah Sachs is a, this is her debut graphic novel. And um, the illustrations, as you can see again from the cover, this is a bright, um, colorful illustrations throughout. They are all in color. And there's lots and lots of details in the background. So um, for example, there's uh, shots of the young lady, her name's Viv, um, Viv's room. cat fight over there. Um, <laughs> there's shots of Viv's room and she is, there's the, all this detail in the background, like her cat even has personality in the, in the background images. Um, there's posters on the wall and there's just things on her desk and there's just so much detail. There's also in um, some of the shots of her there's like full page um, sort of aerial of her schoolyard and where there's lots of kids milling around and you can see personalities of some of those kids in the illustrations. They're not even characters, but you can see that there's stories going on back there. So I really love that. I think this is um, a, a planned, it's planned to have a sequel. This is a planned series. So maybe some of those other kids will come into future novels, but this is a must for middle school and elementary libraries. Uh, no content concerns for elementary at all. Um, and uh, it's just, it's really good themes. This is going to be like uh, Raina Telgemeier fans, um, Shannon Hell, um, the Friends series um, fans, Kayla Miller. So this is recommended for grades three through seven and is Kirkus starred, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some more starred reviews pop up in the next couple of weeks for this one. It's excellent. Okay, next up we have picture books. These are generally recommended for elementary school, but sometimes are recommended for older readers as well. Um, we have two picture books this week. There were many more released, but a lot of them did not meet my criteria of having at least two positive reviews, so they did not make the list. Okay, our first picture book today is Glitter Everywhere. This is by Chris Barton, who is a Siebert Honor winner for um, the Dayglow Day Brothers back in 2009. I've met Chris Barton at the Texas Library Association Conference and um, very cool and happy for this author. He's done a lot of great things for informational books for children. Um, this one is, as the title suggests, uh, about the history of glitter. 
So this is really great for art teachers and anyone who does crafts in their classroom or in the library, if you have maker space with glitter in it, um, this would be great. It talks about the problems with glitter actually. So as much as we may love glitter, it is a pollutant in the environment and it is a microplastic. So it discusses that problem and also um, efforts to create a more sustainable glitter. It also um, goes into mica mining and how the industry uses child labor um, in doing that and how dangerous that is for those children. Um, and it talks about how, uh, why humans love like glittery, shiny things, which we totally do. Um, so this is really, I think, a great um, book to have in the library and uh, very easy to book talk. Kids love glitter. I um, haven't seen the actual physical book for this, but I think the there's actually like shiny, sparkly pages in the cover and stuff uh, for this one, which always gets uh, students' attention when they're checking out books. So this is book list starred and recommended for grades K through five. And our last book this week is The Horseback Librarians. This one is going to be great if you are looking for um, books to read about the history of libraries or um, even bookmobiles, um, or if you're doing like um, the uh, Waiting for Biblio Burro, uh, Waiting for the Biblio Burro, which is um, in, set in Colombia. This is the same concept, but in the U.S. Um, this is set in Kentucky, in rural Kentucky, in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And at that time, librarians would go and from farm to farm delivering library books on horseback. Um, this is, the character in this is, an, is a fictional librarian, but it's based on um, librarians who really did do this. It's based on something that really did happen. So this is not, doesn't have any starred reviews currently. I just think it's going to be really popular um, with librarians um, to talk about history of libraries. Um, this is recommended for grades preschool through grade four. Okay, so that is a wrap for our new release spotlight for the week of June 27th, 2003. My name is Lee Colazzo, also known as Mrs. Reader Pants, and you can find all the new release spotlights going back for an entire year on my blog at www.readerpants.net. I will put the direct link to this week's new release spotlight blog write-up in the description for this video, as well as last week's. Remember that um, the spotlight is, this video doesn't do every single title that I've put on the spotlight. This is just my favorites. Um, so there are in additional titles on the written up new release spotlight. So. Um, if you like this video, please give me a quick like and share, and I will see you next week for the first new release spotlight for the month of July. Have a great week, everyone.